What is going on? Welcome back to Financial Journey. So today I want to talk to you on Fisker. I want to go over some of the current data points, what's been coming out from the company itself, and where I see things going in the short term. Before I get into any of that though, make sure to hit that thumbs up and subscribe. I always greatly appreciate that. And with that said, let's get right to it. So the market does open in about five minutes. Pre-market it is currently up 0.67%. But in comparison to the other EVs, it is still lagging, which is unfortunate. Today, there has been no news, no SEC filings, nothing like that. Yesterday's news that came out was more fluff, I would consider it as. So Fisker celebrates numerous Fisker Ocean Award wins in 2023 for Best Electric Vehicle, Best SUV, and Best Product Design. So once again, it's good. But is it a reason to go out and buy Fisker? No. So I'd really categorize that as just fluff. The news that did come out on the 19th, rather, is more substantial to the operations. So Fisker provides updates on improved service capabilities and staffing in the US and Canada. So I think that's a, a very good necessity for the operations to succeed and for Fisker to move forward. The only negative to this is that, and plus I feel like this is how the market interpreted this news, is just on the future earnings, there's going to be so much just expenses as a result of hiring and just expanding. It's just not the best. So once again, I feel like Fisker put themselves in this own scenario where they have a ton of skeletons in the closet and just they it's not a good image right now, even though if you look at their ratios right now, so the PS ratio is 7.1. The future is 0.3. Like Fisker is cheap. It is crazy, crazy cheap. But Nobody wants to hold it. Nobody wants to buy it. And this is why it has been lagging the broader market, despite a lot of analysts saying that there is going to be a nice continuation of a rally into 2024. So I just wanted to quickly play this. It does really talk on the broader market's optimism and how eventually if Fisker gets their stuff together, could piggyback off of this. So I'm just going to quickly for a play this. Look at, look at what he's seeing in the charts is Chris Verone. He's the head of technical analysis at Strategus, which is a Baird company. Chris, you're taking a broader look. This is the time of year when people really sit back and take reflections, and you're doing the same things with the charts. Uh, when you do, when you step back, uh, what do you see? I think there's two or three things going on. I'd say, number one, let's totally embrace this momentum surge that we've seen over the last six or seven weeks. I mean, we're talking about things you see very, very rare. Surge in new highs, percent of stocks above the 200 day has surged here as well. Those are all the makings or the conditions of a much broader advance than characterized the first 10 months uh, of the year. So I think we certainly have to embrace that. So but, this is real. Yeah, but I think we can also ask the question, what does that mean in the short term? Because what's the immutable rule of Wall Street? What as prices change, down? as prices change, so do attitudes, right? Yeah. And I think there's a clear shift in the attitudes. As we see it in our meetings, we see it on our calls. There is a bullishness that has not been there all year. So I want to be a little bit mindful of the sentiment picture maybe into the first month or two of the year I think that's a tactical consideration the longer term setup as we end 23 is pretty good we're seeing decent leadership it's broadened it's more cyclical the market is certainly broader here and I think the bigger question that I have into next year is are there hints of change are there signs of leadership change that's where I want to spend some time and is there the, is that the case? I mean, people have been yeah. talking about the small caps as maybe potentially the next leadership. You think that bleeds out? Well, I think one of the most important changes is happening at the small cap level where value is actually exerting itself. I mean, small cap value has been outperforming small cap growth since June. I don't think many people realize the extent to which the value factor has really exhibited itself down the cap scale. The so, yeah, ultimately everything the foundation is there for fisker to have a substantial rally and piggyback with the broader market as what you even just heard uh, numerous times throughout that minute and 48 seconds so fisker just needs to get their stuff together to allure value investors in so i just wanted to go over some of the recent updates including analyst ratings and everything under the sun so latest analyst ratings was done about 14 days ago i tie who did give a four dollar price target Previous to that was a $1 sell rating 
came from Goldman Sachs, Mark does have a 63% success rating as well. So analysts aren't really favorable towards Fisker right now. Market just opened and it is now down 0.67%. But no matter what, I'll go over some of the data points and everything else that you need to know, starting off with shorts. Let's take a look at what shorts are doing. So right now, shorts are increasing about 28,000 shares. 40.6% of the free float is being shorted. That is very high. And then 86.96 million shares overall are being shorted. Cost of borrow average is 13.38%, so substantially higher in comparison to yesterday. Right now, there is zero shares available to be shorted through interactive brokers, as you can kind of see right here. And plus, we are right here anyway, so it will say that uh, right here so zero shares available so who knows kind of interesting stuff could happen behind the scenes but no matter what there's just a lot of fundamental stuff that is going wrong with fisker right now and just while i'm still on here looking at utilization it is 97.22 and short score is 84.05 if you have any questions about any of this let me know in the comments below be more than happy to break that down for you as well keep in mind i'm not a financial advisor you guys always do your own due diligence so i'm not going to refresh this because that'll refresh starting i guess today and there's not really much data but yesterday there was one hundred and thirteen thousand dollars in calls being purchased versus 308 inputs so despite a lot of the information that i previously mentioned people are somewhat optimistic especially if you compare this data to over the last several weeks, a lot more calls have been purchased. So that's kind of a good thing. Of the call options that have been purchased though, there is an anticipation for it to be above $2 by the end of this week. So with it being Friday, might come to realization. And as well, above $2 by the end of next week. So the last week in December. Who knows? Uh, it could come to realization. Like I said, all Fisker does need to do is get the right value investors to kickstart this. Then you are going to get a rush of them coming in. So looking at the technical. So with it at $1.50, so it kind of bounced higher now, it is trading between this S1 and the pivot. So $1.57 is going to be the next strong point to watch for. That is the resistance. And $1.40. 41 is going to be the next strong support. So you will want to watch both to see exactly where Fisker does land. But clearly with PCE numbers coming out today, very positive and the broader market ready to continue to rally. I feel like bigger things could be coming for Fisker, maybe even putting it between this R1 to the R2. So between $1.73 and $1.83, at least in the short term. Looking at this though, number of retail investors have been staying flat. So no real reason for new investors to get in. It is lower percentile of the boiling band as well. And looking at stochastic, it is at 30. You do see a deviation. So red line above the black showing a bear sediment. But the technicals are really primed and ready for a breakout with the broader market. It just needs that kickstart like i said so let me know your thoughts on fisker have you been buying have you been selling what have you been doing with fisker also on a side note if you are looking for a lot of good compiled information such as analyst ratings analyst forecasts for upcoming earnings take a look at interactive brokers link in the description below and also the comments for all of this information to be completely free so take advantage of that so let me know your thoughts on fisker and plus on a side note if you're doing options what are you doing like what expiry date are you picking what strike price i am doing videos on introduction to options just so people know what a call is what a put is what buying and selling both does and just important things that you need to know so take a look at those videos in case you don't know anything about options one final thing i just wanted to share with you take advantage of this promo as well it is only up until december the 31st sign up for an account with moomoo Moo, throw a hundred dollars at it and you get five free stocks each stock can be valued up to two thousand dollars take advantage of that link in the description below and also the comments but with all that said i appreciate all of you watching